Hello and welcome to the 40 areas of financial technology presentation. I am David Dury and my primary activity is to train bankers about financial technology, digital banking, the future of financial services all around the world. I am co-author of five internationally published books about the future of banking. And I have been training uh, bankers uh, in the past 10 years in over 50 countries around the world. I am founding member of the World FinTech Association, and I am member of the panel of judges in numerous competitions and awards programs for banks and bankers. I am also a top 10 global thought leader and influencer in financial technology, as well as a top 50 global thought leader and influencer in digital transformation. Here you can see me with the five books I am proud co-author of. Actually, the FinTech book, published in more than 10 languages, the PayTech book, the AI book, which is about artificial intelligence in financial services, the Wealth Tech book, as well as another book on Wealth Tech, Wealth Management Technology, which is focusing on investment services, Wealth Management Services, Asset Management Services for Millennials and Generation Z. So let's now please go to the 40 areas of financial technology, or also known as the Galaxy of FinTech. Here is the galaxy of fintech. Within the universe of financial services, we can find our beautiful galaxy, the galaxy of financial technology. The galaxy of financial technology consists of seven solar systems. Paytech, channel tech, Lend tech and credit tech, data tech, wealth tech, reg tech, as well as other areas within financial technology. Around these stars, the seven stars, pay tech, channel tech, lend tech, data tech, wealth tech, reg tech, and others, are 40 planets, so to speak. But obviously, besides planets, specific areas within financial technology, there are sub areas, in fact, around 500 moons and asteroids, so to speak. So our galaxy of financial technology is very rich. Let's take a brief look at the specific planets revolving around our seven stars. So let's first go inside Paytech. What do we see inside Paytech? Inside Paytech, we see seven areas. Let's begin with CBDCs, central bank digital currencies. CBDCs are extremely important because when we are criticizing cryptocurrencies and when we are seeing excessive risk taking and certain red flags within cryptocurrencies, we immediately have to think about the future. Where will all this amazing innovation precipitate? How can sovereigns, states, independent central banks harness the power and innovative genius of cryptocurrencies? Well, the answer is CBDCs and 
large central banks around the world, from the Federal Reserve to the um, uh, European Central Bank, from the Bank of Japan uh, to the Swiss National Bank and beyond, um, the major central banks are working on it. But there are many, many question marks around central bank digital currencies. Uh, for example, one of the major question marks is how to construct these central bank digital currencies. Do we first want to construct a local circulation CBDC or a cross-border circulation capable CBDC? Do we want central bank digital currencies to run on distributed ledger technology? Or do we want them to run through more traditional central counterparty clearing systems? And there are many more question marks. For example, can we create programmable parametric money, so to speak, central bank digital currencies with smart contracts in the background? Number two is mobile wallets. Mobile wallets are extremely important because mobile wallets will probably make bank accounts, bank accounts as we know them, obsolete. And probably mobile wallets will make bank accounts obsolete through an almost perfect textbook case cycle of market disruption. Clayton Christensen, the legendary professor of Harvard Business School, would be very proud to see this cycle, this textbook case of disruption. Of course, such a process is rather slow. It requires decades, not only years or months, but it is happening. And to a certain extent, it does make perfect sense. Number three, smartphone banking. Well, think through how many different ways we can use our smartphone in banking. Think through how, how important smartphones are to run mobile banking applications and how many additional other ways we can use and we do use our smartphones in financial services. Number four, messaging, clearing, and settlement technology. SWIFT, the current global interbank messaging system, well, SWIFT is basically trying to renew itself. One of the results of this effort is ISO 2022. And ISO 2022 will bring traditional payments, mes messaging clearing settlement based payments, not blockchain, not distributed ledger based payments, where messaging clearing and settlement is essentially one. So traditional payments to a whole new level. And it's happening. We are, uh, it's happening in cross-border payments through ISO 2022, but even more, it's happening in local clearing payments, real-time clearing, de facto free payments. These are very important things. And these improvements, these innovations, which are originating from technologies, will basically change the structure of the market of payments. Number five, remittances. There are currently around 200 digital only remittance services providers globally. One of them, a well-known one, is 
transfer-wise. Think through the success of transfer-wise. Think through how it's cutting through the noise. Think through the analogy of payments and telecommunications, the way payments are heading to a zero cost base, uh, uh, essentially uh, free service, and how this follows the pattern of phone calls. If you want to make international calls, you now do it free with WhatsApp or WeChat or uh, Messenger. Uh, doesn't matter how long you are calling, doesn't matter which two countries you are uh, uh, connecting, it's de facto free. Anyway, number six, micropayments. Micropayments are underestimated in terms of their importance. Micropayments are based on the assumption that payments will de facto become free and instant. And if payments are free and instant, the increments of payments will change. It will not be uh, like bulk payments, like we pay monthly rental fee or monthly leasing fee, and we receive annual interests on our savings, but, uh, but um, the flow of money will granularly uh, follow the flow of time. So probably we will pay for our leasing, for our rentals uh, on a daily automated incremental basis. Uh, we will pay for services on a second or millisecond measured on-off uh, basis and so on. Number seven, POS innovations point of sales terminals. The entire point of sales procedure is under siege and it's changing. Um, if I were Visa or MasterCard, I wouldn't be so calm. Uh, there is major disruption going on and incumbent players such as Visa and MasterCard are almost always late to discover this level of disruption. Think about the POS terminals essentially turning into soft POS and virtual POS terminals. The POS terminal and smartphones essentially melting into one and then take an additional step and think through how I began to explain the solar system of payments technology by mentioning the fact that mobile wallets are basically disrupting the underlying bank account as a whole. And also think through bank account to bank account payments within the wider logic of open banking and payments services directive to when we think about the European Union and obviously open banking in a UK type of terminology, uh, but it's also going on in Australia, uh, North America, and many other jurisdictions. So anyway, uh, Paytech is an amazing solar system and a very important solar system to keep our eyes on. Please allow me to move to our second solar system, channel tech. You know very well that in banking channels, we are in a monotonous growth period. The number of channels is growing. Old channels are staying with us while newer channels are emerging. So the total number of potentially meaningful banking channels is monotonously growing. Let's look at augmented reality. Augmented reality is the physical reality augmented by an additional layer of digital information on top. Or let's look at virtual reality. Virtual reality is entirely imaginary, entirely digital. Many banks and an increasing number of banks globally 
are starting to use augmented reality and virtual reality as new emerging channels currently. But there is something beyond virtual reality, different, separate, scattered patchworks of virtual reality can all come together and create something bigger, something more important, something truly transformative. And that is the metaverse. And metaverse banking is in a nascent state, but it's there. And it will come and it will grow and all sorts of financial services will have their, so to speak, digital twins, their digital reincarnations within the metaverse. And this will be truly transformative. Think about metaverse real estate, metaverse real estate and it's going on and it's meaningful. Anyway, number 10, voice banking. Think about Alex or Siri. It's especially popular in the United States. Voice has essentially uh, emerged uh, in and, and, and grown into a new banking channel. And guess what? We can do much more with the voice than we currently imagine. There are many, many more opportunities here. As artificial intelligence is creating stronger and stronger, smarter and smarter, more and more capable and interactive back engines behind these voice assistants, so will grow the importance of voice as a channel. In number 11, wearables. Think about how many uh, different wearable devices are circulating around from smart glasses to near field communications, NFC technology propelled payments rings, from smart bracelet to health tech propelled smart watches. So wearable technology will have a growing role within financial services. Video banking, well, video banking sounds less than the most innovative technology circulating around, but video banking is a beautiful in-between to move baby boomers and a little bit more mature generations away from physical channels without throwing them in the brave new world of uh, the depth of metaverse. So it's a good in-between technology, transitory technology, so to speak. And branch tech, let's reimagine the branch. Let's reimagine the branch for the 21st century. Let's reimagine the branch for the age of data. Anyway, let's move from channel tech to land tech and credit tech, our third solar system within the galaxy of financial technology. In this third solar system, we only have three planets. We only have three planets, but rather large ones and these planets are growing fast as well. First of all, crowdfunding. Crowdfunding is about funding startups, micro, small and mid-sized enterprise innovative projects online through website. websites. It sounds great, it sounds great. However, crowdfunding has different sub areas and within these sub areas are different solutions with different levels of compliance. And all in all, 
equity crowdfunding, taking equity ownership in risky yet innovative new startup projects is a double-edged sword. Uh, when it goes uh, to the general public, it's almost like an IPO. It's almost like initial public offering. And there are question marks there. Uh, there are risks there, which we have to talk through in the future. Number 16, peer-to-peer -peer lending. Private people lending to other private people through online marketplaces. We also call it marketplace lending, crowdfunding and peer-to-peer -peer lending together. So private people lending to other private people through websites without knowing each other, typically without doing substantial due diligence on each other. Well, traditional bankers have serious question marks here, and we will hear in the coming years a lot about these accumulated risks uh, precipitating within this otherwise beautiful, innovative, and meaningful arena. And let's look at the new libeling of the financial technology world, BNPL, by now pay later a highly controversial online purchase intertwined, online purchase linked methodology of lending, very often de facto originating from financial technology providers registered and supervised in the legal form of e-money, electronic money institutions. So typically BNPL providers are not supervised as CIs, credit institutions, or so to speak, to be a little bit more specific, uh, fully licensed uh, banks. And this in itself raises a plethora of question marks. Let's move to the fourth solar system, the solar system of data, data tech. And let's first take a look at IoT, Internet of Things. Internet of Things is about everything being connected with everything as real time uh, uh, using the internet around the world, billions, tens of billions, or even hundreds of billions of sensors, microchips, devices, machines, entities, real-time connected globally. Well, this will raise the entire legal question of machine as an entity, machine liability, um, machine committed things, as well as machine to machine banking. But let's just think through IoT this way. 5G, which at the top of its capabilities will be two, three magnitudes faster than 4G used to be, is absolutely in the pipeline partially delivered in certain parts of the world. But 6G is coming, which will be much, much faster than 5G. So the entire data highway will become magnitudes wider and faster. And that will lead us to the age of very big data or ubiquitous big data. That is not area number 19. Well, Big data, rich data is extremely important. I give you one example. Uh, in area number four, in the solar system of payments, one of the planets is messaging clearing and settlement technology. And I told you that SWIFT is working on ISO 20 or 22, which, which is a solution essentially for rich payments, carrying much more data than traditional payments. You can even attach files 
pictures to the payments. You can give much, uh, much more extensive commentary. Uh, there is much more information, geolocation, for ex precise geolocations, for example, linked to every single payment. Think through how valuable, rich payments data will be. But that is just a granular, teeny, tiny segment of the super big data that is descending upon us. And traditional banks are not necessarily typical champions of handling this data. Technology giants, Google, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent, and a couple of other players globally are the typical masters of big data. So we bankers have to catch up. Number 20, interbank blockchain, distributed ledger technology connecting banks with other banks. Transactional databases, uh, robust databases, uh, um, cryptographically protected databases between banks. Well, this is very, very exciting. And you have to know one thing. When we look at the technology of interbank blockchain, uh, it in fact raises the level of compliance and cybersecurity compared to current paradigms as opposed to cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies and blockchain are sometimes intertwined in the mind map of uh, decision makers and analysts, which is a big mistake, uh, as opposed to cryptocurrencies, which are very problematic from a compliance uh, risk uh, and uh, uh, cybersecurity uh, point of view. So let's detach these two things, blockchain and uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, anyway, interbank blockchain uh, has 30 major areas within, for example, trade finance, for example, interbank clearing, for example, Forex on blockchain or digital identity on blockchain. Uh, and within these 30 major areas inside interbank blockchain, so 30 moons circulating around this planet, there are also many, many asteroids in the system, even smaller sub areas. Number 21, back office blockchain. How banks and other large organizations around the world will put their own back office operations on distributed ledgers for the sake of better data management, more robust, more secure, more practical uh, storage and architecture of data. For example, smart contracts belong to this area, parametric, self-executing, uh, uh, coded, uh, uh, dynamic uh, contracts, uh, and more, much more is in the pipeline. Well, our 22nd planet in our galaxy of financial technology is nothing smaller than AI, artificial intelligence. Well, we have to think through how big data, our 19th planet, fed into real-time neural networks of non-linear mathematical functions, basically artificial neurons, and layers of these artificial neurons, essentially deep neural networks, can create the beautiful results of narrow AI or area-specific artificial intelligence, as well as uh, machine learning and deep learning.
and how this is fundamentally different compared to AGI, artificial general intelligence, which is something very controversial, which will lead eventually to machine superintelligence once it emerges. And uh, singletons can emerge through the technology of artificial general intelligence, as well as the entire humanity can reach the point of singularity, which is the theoretic point of machines and humans being equally intelligent. Anyway, dealing with all this as a traditional bank is a lot. So we have to be selective here. We have to understand what AI means to us, how we can use artificial intelligence to enhance our tactical moves as a bank and to fulfill our strategic goals better. Let's move to planet number five, the beautiful planet of wealth tech, wealth management technology. And uh, a, 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 apologies, the beautiful solar system of wealth tech, wealth management technology. And let's move to planet number 23, open banking, APIs, TPPs, open banking, application programming interfaces, and third party providers. Well, I will only tell you one thing in this regard, it's an infinite topic. But what I want to tell you is that in the United Kingdom, open banking is up and running since the 1st of January, 2018. And guess what? Currently in the UK, there are almost 300 third-party providers registered under open banking. I have categorized them into 10 major, very exciting categories. And open banking is very much alive, vivid, full of innovations. A lot is going on. And of course, globally, there are more and more and more jurisdictions sort of implementing their versions of open banking. Not to talk about the payments aspects of open banking. For example, PSD2, Payment Services Directive 2, within the European Economic Area, which will eventually take us from a card, Visa MasterCard, dominated global retail payments paradigm to a bank account to bank account dominated global payments paradigm until mobile wallets will disrupt the very institution of bank accounts themselves. Number 24, personal finance dashboards. How to aggregate personal financial information and how to show beautiful dashboards, uh, individual analysis, 360 degree understanding and vis neat, beautiful visualization of someone's financial situation and give smart advice based on that. Number 25, robo-advisors. Think about Betterman and the other large robo-advisors in the United States. And currently in Southeast Asia, they are rising. And in the UK, we also see the first major steps of robo-advisors essentially disrupting traditional wealth management. We are now not talking about 100, 200 basis points of asset under management proportionate uh, asset management fees but we are talking about 20, 25, 30, 40 basis points. It's a different uh, ball game. It's a different um, situation. Uh, wealth management is being disrupted in front of our eyes. And planet number 26, social trading. Social trading is also often called copy trading or mirror trading. Think about eToro. 
Social trading is basically the social media of asset trading. Indices, uh, uh, different uh, shares from stock markets around the world, um, uh, foreign exchange, uh, commodities, uh, and even cryptocurrencies are changing hands among millions and millions of young people in an essentially social mediatized way. It's amazing uh, to see this. Uh, number 27, decentralized currencies. Well, currently we have over 2000 cryptocurrencies circulating globally with a total exposure of well over 1 trillion US dollars and indirect exposure uh, of uh, up to 5 trillion. And most of it is openly non-compliant and all of it is highly problematic. By the way, my prediction is uh, that uh, this brave new world of cryptocurrencies uh, will morph into and go down, but survive in the form of CBDCs. So um, decentralized currencies will, will uh, teleport uh, into a new solar system from wealth management to paytech and in the form of central bank digital currencies, all the innovation, all the genius of um, decentralized currencies will live on following sort of a crisis or cataclysm or fall or explosion or implosion of the current uh, crypto universe as we know it. Number 28, asset tokenization. Well, current superstar forms of asset tokenization such as ICOs, initial coin offerings, or NFTs, uh, uh, non-fungible tokens, uh, and uh, STOs, security token offerings, and many, many, many more reincarnations and formats. These are highly problematic. However, asset tokenization as an idea, asset tokenization as a concept is genius. So asset tokenization will have to be regulated tokenized assets will have to be linked to the assets to ownership in the traditional legal sense, uh, 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 to the ownership of uh, assets behind tokenization, and that will be the legal formula. It will also have to be supervised and regulated because we always have to protect the general public. There is a lot of fraud going on here. And we have to only let people invest into things that reach a certain quality, uh, a certain minimum. So regulation will come here. And as a tokenization is meaningful, and as soon as it's totally transparent, uh, totally compliant, and totally well regulated, smart regulation has to come. Uh, well, bad regulation is worse than non-regulation, but smart regulation is much better than regulatory vacuum or regulatory gap or non-regulation. Anyway, let's move to another universe, an other uh, solar system, RegTech. RegTech is our sixth star and RegTech consists of six planets. Planet number 29 is a composite, cybersecurity, privacy tech, and trust tech. Think through all these 40 technologies I am listing on this slide. The entire galaxy of financial technology is full of risks. Every single new technology has its own set of new risks 
rising. And we have to somehow understand, analyze, measure, and mitigate these risks, even regulate them. So the Basel Committee will have a lot of work in the upcoming new paradigms. We are now at Basel 3 and 4. I am now talking about Basel 5 and 6. Planet number 30, risk tech. Risk tech is about technology helping to manage risks. These are solutions making risk management faster, cheaper, more precise, more intelligent. Area number 31 is compliance tech. Compliance tech helps banks around the world to comply with regulatory requirements. You as a banker know very well how heavy, how expensive burden full compliance is. And compliance is, compliance is becoming ever more complex and costly. So technology helping you, making it faster, cheaper, more reliable to comply is a blessing. It's very important. Compliance tech uh, is an emerging area. Number 32, subtech. What is this subtech? Subtech is supervisory technology. These are solutions for supervisors, regulators, central banks, authorities to better regulate you, to have real-time red flags being raised, to use artificial intelligence to indicate the potential next great scam before it happens or before it becomes too big to fail. Number 33, biometrics. From your iris to your face, from your veins to your heartbeat, from your voice to your DNA, from your ears to your hand, from your gait as you walk to the rhythm of the gyroscope of your smartphone. There are more and more technologies to identify people. And these technologies are double-edged swords. Of course, it's a little bit scary, but also very useful. And just like a knife, we can use it for something very good. And unfortunately, sometimes it's used for bad things. So just like a knife or a double-edged sword, we have to grab it and use it for the right things. There are great potentials here. Seamless, continuous behavioral identification, for example, to mention one. Number 34, digital identity. I think the 2020s will be the decade of digital identity. Yes, why? Because strong digital identity is the missing piece of the puzzle. States are reluctant to set up strong national digital identity regimes. Why? Cybersecurity. And uh, Still, strong digital, state-backed, bank-level digital identity regimes are very much needed. Basically, in this COVID period, one of the key lessons we have learned is that this is the missing piece of the puzzle. Very well built, very swift, very smart, very modern, very robust, and crystal clear digital identity is needed for the next generation of internet. Think about profiles, uh, pseudo identities, uh, the whole nature of cybercrime. And you will understand that the benefits of strong digital identity are huge.
huge, while the risks and the problems originating from not having such regimes, typically, there are some exceptions, uh, but not having those regimes typically cost directly and indirectly a lot. Okay, let's move to our seventh star, others, other areas. So let's first look at neobanks. Well, neobanks, challenger banks. What's the difference between neobanks and challenger banks? Neobanks are basically regulated as e-money, while challenger banks do have their banking licenses. Neobanks and challenger banks are typically digital only, typically mobile only, much, much, much more simple than traditional banks in terms of their channel technologies. They are only focusing on the emerging channels, the new channels. This attracts young people. This creates a new cost structure, a set of revenues, as well as set of costs. And actually, some of these neobanks and challenger banks are reaching economy of scale. For example, Nubank from Brazil um, or Starling from the United Kingdom. And this is, uh, or, or WeBank from China. And this is a very interesting uh, process. These neobanks, these challenger banks are much more flexible, much more nimble, much more up to date than traditional incumbent players. Why? Well, let's look at planet number 36, core banking, core banking technology. Banks and bankers in the 25,000 traditional registered, uh, licensed, uh, to approximately 25,000 active banks around the world are struggling struggling with the legacy. And legacy primarily manifests in the form of legacy core banking systems. Why? Because once you are in it, it's a very, 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 very tough, near impossible to get rid of it. We call it changing engines mid-flight fixing your motorbike while riding it, operating your own art, things like this. And you know, uh, it's really like that. So one of the major questions is how large, complex, up and running incumbent financial institutions can totally renew their core banking and move to market-leading competitive new paradigms. Number 37, quantum finance. Well, you all have heard about quantum computing, how computers will soon become, in certain aspects of mathematic operations, many, many magnitudes faster than they currently are. This quantum computing will have fundamental effect on financial services as they are now. This is why we are talking about quantum finance in risk management, in cyber security, uh, in wealth management, uh, in new channels, in handling data, it will have fundamental effects that now we are able to create computers and we are increasingly able to create uh, functional computers uh, on a subatomic level. Number 38. ESG tech, environmental, social, and governance technology. Very, very important. Most bankers underestimate the twin engine, the power of the twin engine of linking digital transition with 
environmental, social, and governance excellence. When you do something that transforms you digitally and helps the society around you, you are moving two needles. And uh, that's a very, very beautiful to uh, link these two things. And there are, there are many, many amazing global best practice examples uh, uh, for this. Uh, I am actually collecting those and I have an extensive collection. So you can beautifully link and intertwine your digital transition journey with your environmental protection and awareness and responsibility journey. Number 39, insure tech, insurance technology. Well, that belongs to other areas because it's an entire galaxy in itself. When you come from the beautiful world of insurance, insure tech for you is not only a planet circulating uh, in the solar system of others, but insure tech is the entire galaxy of yours. So the same level of taxonomy, the same level of structuralization we could do within insurance technology. And then number 40, other other areas such as neo aggregators or austro banking exo banking banking uh, in space essentially or transhumanism uh, as a channel well of course these areas are less uh, essential in a short term uh, uh, tactical sense, but uh, very, very exciting. So thank you very, very much for your kind attention. And stay with me, stay with me, because I want to ask you four things, please. The first thing is to please follow me on LinkedIn. I am David Dury. You can click here or you can find the link uh, 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 below this video, uh, as well as uh, you can scan this QR code and get to my LinkedIn profile. The number two thing, after you have already followed me on LinkedIn, the number two thing I want to ask you is to join my Facebook group. It's a public Facebook group. And the name of the Facebook group, my Facebook group, is Banking Transition with David. You can click here, or you can find the URL uh, below this video, or you can scan this QR code and get to my Facebook group. Well, when you have already followed me on LinkedIn, and joined my Facebook group, Banking Transition with David, I want to ask you please to be so kind and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Well, uh, you go to the right side below this video and you can see this red subscribe button. Again, look to the bottom right side to find the subscribe button. And also, you can get notifications when I put my new videos here. And trust me, a lot of exciting uh, things uh, about the future of banking are in the pipeline. And number four, I want to explain you something. One of my core activities is to provide training programs about all this about fintech, about digital banking, about banking innovation to bankers all around the world. So think about the galaxy of financial technology within the universe of financial services and pick a star such as payments technology or 
land tech, credit tech, or data, or wealth tech, or reg tech, and order a training program from me. You can also order a training program about a specific planet, about one of these amazing 40 areas of financial technology. For example, recently, my training program about CBDCs, central bank digital currencies, is getting a lot of attention and a, a lot of publicity. Or you can order a specific training program about mobile wallets, an essential uh, disruptive technology changing the very nature of uh, bank accounts. Or you can order a training program about blockchain in banking. Once I gave a very uh, successful training program about uh, uh, mortgage securitization on blockchain to a major bank in Canada. And uh, Think about that mortgage securitization on a blockchain. And it was a two day training program. That's like an asteroid, like even smaller than a moon uh, uh, within this uh, galaxy, very much specific area. I'm constantly giving training programs about wealth tech, wealth management technology. One of my favorite areas is robo advisors, but another one is social trading. I am giving training programs about open banking, open banking, third party providers, application programming interfaces are extremely important. Recently, there is huge demand for payments technology, pay tech. For example, uh, the future of messaging clearing and settlement, ISO 2022, or smartphone-based payments, uh, or the brave new world of remittances. Recently also, there is a lot of interest in land tech and credit tech, as well as risk tech, risk management, risk tech within the um, uh, solar system of uh, reg tech, uh, but in fact, the entire reg tech area is very, very, very popular. So this is what I want to tell you. Contact me, um, uh, pick the entire galaxy, or uh, pick a solar system, or pick a planet, uh, or, or, or pick a moon or an asteroid, uh, turn to me, and I am happily delivering a very, very exciting uh, training program uh, to your colleagues uh, and to you. Uh, thank you very, very much. Uh, for your kind attention.